Hey everyone, I'm Joe Gaskowski, Senior Editor with Restaurant Business. I'm here with Sean Thompson. He's the, uh, what's your title, Sean? So I'm VP of IT over at Freddy's Stores and Custard and Steak Burgers. Okay. Uh, Sean, let's just get the elephant out of the room right away. Freddy's has a deal to be acquired. Tell us about that and what, if anything, that's going to mean for your job. So yes, Freddy's was uh, recently acquired uh, by Roan. And for us, it means an acceleration of growth. It's the same stuff we've been doing with the exact same focuses. And we're all thrilled and excited to just kind of keep moving the Freddy's way forward. So it's good times. Yeah. Um, tell us what's on your plate uh, from an IT perspective recently at Freddy's. So it, in so many ways, everything's on the plate, but if it wouldn't be an IT plate if it wasn't a smorgasbord. Um, but some of the biggest things that we've been focusing on um, have been all around the guest experience, better understanding of the guest experience, the team members' interaction with the guest experience. I mean, everything we do is always centered around the guest, so it makes sense that the technology focus is around the guest. So better data that we're getting from the guest, being able to better take care of the guests, things like that. What kind of data do you collect and, and how do you use it? So we, we try to collect as little as possible because I, and maybe this is just my you know, personality bleeding through. I don't love giving my data to a bunch of companies and I don't want to get a ton of data from our guests, but the data that they are willing to give us is the simple ones, right? Like they like to buy this, they like to buy that, they like their transactions. And then the idea is that we're serving up that, which, what the data tells us in a way that they enjoy it. In other words, if our guests come in and say our Dr. Pepper Frost that we recently served, it scored high on, on guest feedback. It, many restaurants, especially in the Texas market, to no surprise, ran out very fast of that product. That's, that's good data that came in listening to our guests without too many people you know, signing away their rights to their firstborn or something like that. <laughs> um, so like getting that data in and knowing it's like, okay, there's opportunity for us in that drink space to be able to do more. And so then it's handing that data off to our, you know, our culinary team like Chef Rick let him go to town with it. So just enabling that data to flow from one place through IT out to somebody else so that, again, the focus is on the guest. Let's talk about AI a little bit. Obviously, uh, a buzzword, um, a lot of hype. How are you using it, if at all, at Freddy's? And, and where do you see it going uh, in the future? So it, it, I, I'm probably the, uh, the, the sad clown at a show like this because I very much believe there's an AI bubble. And so as I walk around from vendor to vendor and, and talk about the AI bubble, they're like, but you're talking about my career. And I'm like, I'm sorry, it's just, it is what it is. However, having said that, we do use AI. We've been using AI on the Freddy's BI team for years now. Um, we work very cutting edge on that because it's a place that if we get it wrong, we're smart enough to be able to figure it out and work with it. If it disrupts our day, it disrupts the day of the BI team, right? We're not impacting guests. We're not impacting the restaurants with that kind of... AI early adoption mistakes. But then as, as we narrow down, as we go towards the restaurant space, then there's less and less room for the, the weaknesses that AI still has, um, whether it's hallucinas, hallucinations, things like that, the, less and less prone to having room for that. So where we won't see it is us using AI to directly interact with our guests. Last time I checked, we're in the hospitality business. We want the humans in the hospitality business. That's where we're doing it. So right now, AI is not even on the table for stuff like that. But back office, high above, again, the further away we move from the guests, the more it's being sprinkled in and we're able to put it to use. Able to understand that data, give actionable insights to restaurant operators, things like that. What makes you say there's a bubble? There is, well, D despite my stunningly good looks, I am, I've actually been around technology for a long time. Um, I remember as a, as a little kid, the early bubbles of the tech space popping. I remember growing up in the video game bubble burst of the 80s, um, the 90s. But I see the same trends where there are a ton of different companies that are all trying and growing and doing this and doing that. And it's just gotten to a space where it's so big that you know some of these companies that are now 19, 20 months away from their last VC investments. They're going to fold. It's going to happen. But for every pets.com that didn't exist after 2000, there are companies like Amazon that survived not only that, but kept going. So just because I know it's a bubble, I know it's going to burst, 
doesn't mean that there's not opportunity for those companies in there and things for the restaurant space to take advantage of and go for that as well. But you'd rather wait and see who kind of emerges from the dust. A, a, a little bit, but also may, make it so that if we do make a mistake, if we do pick the wrong vendor, it's a small painless mistake. It, it's one that we can brush off and go, okay, what's next? Right. And so it sounds like, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of brands adopt drive through AI, uh, even answering the phones in the restaurants. That's not going to be coming to Freddy's anytime soon. No, it, it, it's something my COO and I talk about constantly because we are on the exact same page. We trust our team members and we trust that experience to be hospitable to where we're always looking to see what's new, what we can enhance with. But yeah, not taking that interaction, that one-to-one -one away from what our team members have been trained on and what our guests come to expect from us. Does that philosophy also apply to something like kiosks? Are you using those in the restaurant where there's this digital interface between the customer and the employee? So th that's another area of technology where I, I, it, it's, it's constant that we're being asked about kiosks. Um, and we, we get that internally and externally. But again, from our CEO to our CMO to our COO, to myself, we all agree that that's not the interaction we want at a Freddy's. It may be great for some brands in some places, and I have always put a small little asterisk out there to say never say never, right? There may be a Freddy's in a high traffic area with a bunch of, you know, a great international market where English isn't the only language being spoke over and over and over again. Maybe a kiosk there makes sense but that's not one of the nearly 600 locations we have today. And where we are today, you walk in, the expectation is a smiling face to greet you at a Freddy's, not a kiosk in the way. One of the themes at this year's conference so far has been edge computing. I keep yes. hearing people talk about it. What is edge computing? So the, the idea of edge computing, it's very simple. And, and again, this is my old school nerd hat coming on. So um, it, it's you're trying to do the actual calculations, the computing, at the device closest to the person. The, the oldest way to think about it was back in the, the early days of computers, you had punch cards and you got them all ready, you took them off to a big machine, it did all the math and it came back and it just said error and you had to figure out what you did. And again, big machine. And then eventually they said, well, you know what, we can do some computing like actually at your desk. You could run this thing called a spreadsheet and it was amazing, changed the world. And then we, as we kept going through these technology cycles, we would see it move away from the desk to a, to a big server, back to the desk, off to the cloud. In the restaurant, we've seen the same place. It started with an old cash drawer, it moved into a computer, it moved back to the register, it moved into the cloud. And now what we're seeing is that we have all of these devices in the restaurants that all have these powerful compute modules, CPUs, GPUs, NPUs, whatever PU you wanna put out there, its processing unit is right there. And so it's about putting that to use and not having to rely on things outside. And the biggest driver, in my opinion, of why that's so hot at a show right now is the less you're sending data off and compute off and the more you're able to do on premise, the cheaper it is. And if any industry is good about finding the cheapest solution, it's the restaurant <laughs> industry. We are the best at that. Does it have the same processing power as the cloud? It, it will never have the same processing power because the whole idea of a cloud is you can distribute that compute. You can get really big, gnarly things. But the problem is you don't really need that. It's just like, you know, my bicycle will never go as fast as a car, yet alone a supercar. But I don't need a supercar to run to the grocery store real quick. I can hop on my bike and go. So let's use that compute that's not as powerful, but it is distributed and it is available and it's handy. And even where it may lose out in power, it's gonna have a speed advantage because it's not sending that off. So that means we're entering a new world of where we're able to do some compute there at the restaurant to combine the compute devices of even say the guest cell phone as they walk into the restaurant. Whole new space that we're getting into. How much is AI driving the edge thing? Because it sounds like edge might be required to power some of these really uh, lightning fast AI transactions. It, it, it's a huge part of that because Again, in those early days of AI, we were sending so much of it off to the cloud to be processed. And then it started being processed with, you know, NVIDIA GPUs that you could get, you could put a, a nice workstation in. But as that technology continues to grow, the models get better, you're using less and less and it's becoming more and more integrated. The computers today are just faster than they were three years ago. 
So by moving that edge closer where we have enough compute to get those jobs done, that's what's eneb enabling that AI to happen right there in the restaurant. Last question, Sean, what piece of technology or type of technology are you most excited about right now? <sighs> There's a lot that's out there. Um, and I would say in, in a broad stroke, anything that is making our team members' lives better, easier, ma making their work environment a more hospitable environment is key for what we try to do. And so the, the specifics of that are, are kind of wibbly wobbly, right? Like, could that be AR? Could that be VR? Maybe, maybe there's something to be said in that. Maybe it's just better voice recognition in the back of the house so that we're able to tell team members based off all this data that we got that we computed at the edge of what needs to happen. So anything that is making those team members' lives easier is great because if you look at what it takes to work at the back of the house of a restaurant, it's a hard job. It'll kick almost anyone's butt. So if I can make it just a little bit easier for them, then I feel like I've done some good and that's the technology that excites me. Good stuff, Sean. Thanks for being here. Uh, thank you for having me.